It's a Kendra, it's a Kendra, it's a Kendra, 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 woo! Hi everybody, this is Barbara. Welcome to my channel, Picky Chick. In today's video, I am going to unbox a five pound thread up rescue box of jewelry. These rescue boxes are getting harder and harder to find, but I did manage to snag one and we're gonna open it up and see what's inside. Here's the box and it is worth noting that this one has come from Vernon Hills, Illinois. It should be pretty simple to open. They've only put one piece of tape. They have casually sealed it. So I'm going to casually open it. Here's what the bag looks like. I will turn it over, kind of get an idea of what might be in there. As always, I will be dumping all the jewelry out in the corner and pulling each item out one by one. And the first item I'm pulling out is a, actually a very pretty stretch bracelet. It's got plastic faceted stones in a pale yellow and a peach, some gold tone accents, and this would be great for spring, like Easter season with the pastels. Pretty. The next thing I pulled out is this statement necklace. These are purple faceted crystals set in gold tone. I like the fact that there are these simple shapes comprising each link. I just like it. There is no maker's mark on this one. I love the shade of purple in this. I also like the way that they're set in these gold tone settings with these little dots around each link. This necklace is finished with a lobster clasp and an extender. I think someone would really enjoy wearing this necklace. I'm definitely going to be selling this one. Before I forget, I did want to mention that if you see anything that you are interested in purchasing from this box, drop me an email at kitsch.barbara at yahoo.com. That's kitsch.barbara at yahoo.com. My email address is right here on the screen. And we can work out a price. You just need to have a PayPal account in order to complete the transaction. Here's another purple item in the box. This is a really pretty amethyst rough cut stone. And it's been dipped in some sort of gold metal. Don't know if it would be gold, but I'd certainly be putting the magnet on there. Look how that's cut. Isn't that pretty? Putting the magnet there, there's definitely an attraction to this little loop on the end. But let's take a look and see what happens with the actual dipping part, the part that's dipped, the stone is dipped in. Now that definitely tells me the whole thing is magnetic. Paired with a gold chain, I think this would make a very sweet necklace. So I'm going to do my best to try to find a matching chain, something that the pendant would look good on and I'm definitely going to be selling this. Look how pretty this earring is. This is an oval cameo earring. The background is sort of a brownish rust and you can see the outline of the frame are all tiny little hearts. It's on a lever back wire. I sure hope the match is in here. I'm going to put this aside and hope I can find the match. The next item coming out is this chunky stretch bracelet. It's brand new. There's a price on there at $14.90. And the brand on there is Akira Chicago. I've never heard of it. It's an attractive piece set in gold tone. Some clear crystals on there. All the stones seem to be there. So I might sell this. Every mystery lot has items you can't sell for one reason or another. Now this is a cute necklace at first sight, but there are pieces on here that are pretty worn. Someone can do something very creative. I have seen people paint metal jewelry and it comes out really nice. This one here is just a pewter type of pendant or pewter tone, I should say, on a black cord. And this is a plastic hinge bracelet. So they're all going in the craft lot. A couple more pieces here going in the craft lot. There's nothing wrong with this. This is just a stretch bracelet. It's kind of lightweight. And this is a necklace 
And the reason it's going in the craft lot is, let me get the focus better on here. There are pieces here that uh, the metal is wearing off. Really pretty components, so someone can do something with this. And if I haven't explained already, a craft lot is just jewelry I can't sell or don't want to sell. And I put it together, I get about 10 to 15 pounds together, and I sell it to crafters on my eBay, in my eBay store. I found the other cameo earring. Oh, I'm so glad. So now there are two of them. I will be listing these in my eBay store. I love these earrings. Check out this beautiful cuff bracelet. It's bronze tone, it's antiqued, and there are some gorgeous faceted crystals in like a light tan, gold, and peach. There is wire wrapping all around, and I'm looking for a mark on it. I'm not seeing a mark and I can hardly believe it. This looks like a designer piece. This is stunning. I had to try this one on for you. Isn't this beautiful? Yes, indeed. This will be listed in my eBay store. This is so pretty. I love this necklace. This is a frontal necklace. It's a faux turquoise and it's got the colors of turquoise and coral beautiful combination it's got scroll work in gold tone it's antique to gold tone just beautiful the front part of the necklace hangs on this gold tone rope chain there's not a maker's mark on this it's finished with a lobster clasp and an extender another piece that i think is very attractive and i'm definitely going to put that in my cell pile this next piece is a very unique necklace the design is very modern. There are three strands with these semi-hammered round charms and these curved tubes. There's a good look at the components there. It is strung on a metallic brown leather cord. Really neat. The end has an oversized unique lobster clasp. Here's how the closure works. There's a loop at the end of the necklace and the lobster clasp just catches the loop and closes like so. The jewelry stamp on here is Lizzie James. And the other side says Handmade in the USA. I am familiar with Lizzie James. This will have a very decent resale value. I'm super happy that it's in this box. This box is pretty good so far. I'm really happy with it. Now, this is what I call a statement necklace. Here's another modern piece. You can see that there are textured circles on this and these faceted clear crystals. So this is a fun design. And as I'm going through, this will definitely end up in the craft lot. As you can see, there's a big chunk that kind of broke off there on one of these crystal pieces. But this, again, is another prime example of a wonderful piece to go in the craft lot because all the other components are quite usable and someone should be pretty happy when they find this in their craft lot. Next item coming out is this adorable ring. It's a feather ring and it has crystals embedded in the feathers. Here's a look at the underside of the ring and it looks like it does have a stamp inside. Inside, you can see that it's stamped with S925ALE. So that is really good news. This is a Pandora ring. It's sterling silver, and it's probably CZ crystals in there. Really thrilled to see this one. This is absolutely gorgeous. Let's go ahead and size this. This ring is a size 7. This is a great piece to find in the box. I'm actually very thrilled about this ring. Here's a really cute stretch bracelet. It's brass tones, kind of got a boho feel to it. It's got tiny brass beads and a teardrop shaped uh, purple composite stone throughout and every other one is positioned the opposite way. I like this. Purple is one of my favorite colors, but I think this is a really pretty stretch bracelet. Well, this is a pretty necklace. This is a three-tiered necklace. The chain is a brass tone. It's got these beautiful iridescent crystals. They're faceted. They're a teal color. Love the sparkle. Each layer has a different design of 
uh, crystals. This has two crystals, this has a round faceted crystal, and this has the smallest crystal. Here's a better look at the chain itself. This is finished with a lobster clasp and it does have an extender. Can't tell if this extender has somewhat of a silver chain to it. Not sure if maybe it was replaced, but in any case, it's finished with this matching crystal on the end. This is a pretty sparkly piece here. I'm definitely gonna sell this one. Here's a set of bangle bracelets. These are super unique. They're silver tone and the inside is enamel. They are all hooked together. Isn't that unique? I don't think I've ever seen anything like this. A little bit of scuffing on the silver part, but not too, too bad. I just think these are so different. I may try to sell those. Just a couple more items going in the craft lab. We've got two stretch bracelets here. This one seems to be turning and that's wood. It's, I don't know if it's designed that way or if the red is fading. Look at this earring. It's a long chain, a crystal little post there, and a little uh, fabric flower on the end. These are two little baby rings. They're very much turning. All of this is going in the craft lot. I find the beads in this necklace so unique. I'm gonna kind of start at the end. These, I can't tell if they're brass or plastic. I think they're plastic, but they've, they've kind of got a neat sheen. They're bronze tone or brown. And look at these other beads. There's like a moon glow kind of effect on these beads. Some gold spacers. And as it continues down, it's got a beautiful pendant. Love the stone. Now these are all plastic beads, I think. I am not actually sure about this one. It's hard to tell sometimes. And it's finished with this gold tassel hanging off of the pendant. I'm in love with those beads. I love the glow off of those beads. I'm not sure if I'm gonna sell it. I am tempted to take those beads off and make something myself. I just love them so much. So I'm gonna put this aside and think about whether I'm going to sell it or not. This is a unique design on this necklace here. It's a peach stones. I believe they're plastic and also there are gold tone components. The beads themselves are convex. You can see how they're rounded on the side there. There's a jewelry mark on here, which is T. That is a Talbot's jewelry mark. I am just noticing that the serpentine chain on this, it's losing its gold finish right there. So, and also it looks like the lobster clasp is broken. So if you haven't already guessed, this is gonna end up in the craft lot. All three of these necklaces are more delicate. This is a silver tone necklace with a delicate silver tone chain. I love the pendant on this. It's a tiny rectang rectangular pendant with sort of an opalesque um, inset inside. I don't think that's a real opal, but it's pretty nonetheless. Here's a copper tone skinny pendant with the letter R etched on it. And I don't know if you can see that, but there's a heart just above the R. There's a better look at that. The necklace all the way on the left is really gorgeous. It's a twisted gold tone chain, a beautiful round faceted stone. It's prong set and it looks very much like a gold citrine. And this is a better look at the setting. It's really a great looking piece. It's time to take the magnet to the pieces here. This is not precious metal since it is sticking to the magnet. The R pendant necklace also is sticking to the magnet. And finally, the gold necklace with the stone, it is not sticking to the magnet. I'm taking a closer look at this pendant to see if I can see any jewelry marks or indications of any kind of precious metal. I don't see any stamps on here. But since it did not stick to the magnet, I think I will go ahead and test this. I'll put on the screen right here the results of the test, whether it was precious metal or not. The next item coming out is this brand new pair of earrings. It's on the earring card. This is made of white seed beads and a three-layered tassel drop. I like these a lot. These are made with seed beads, white seed beads. There's a button top and then there's a three-tiered tassel hanging down. Really cute. The brand is Panacea. I have never sold it, but I have heard of it. 
The earrings are post style. These are super attractive. I like these a lot. I am definitely going to list these. These are all rings, some really cute rings. Let's start with this one. This is a cluster ring with iridescent purple beads. And let's see, I think this might be, is this adjustable? Yeah, this is adjustable. So that's pretty cute. The next ring is a pretty wide ring and it's gold tone. It looks like it's losing some of its finish, but it's cute. Here is a very cute ring. It's a key with a heart shaped top. This one is also adjustable. I think this might be a mood ring. Look at that, it is changing colors. So we have ourselves a mood ring here, very cute. The last ring in this group is this silver tone cross ring, it's textured. This is not adjustable and that's pretty cute. I can size this one. Okay, so this one looks like it is a size seven, maybe seven and a quarter. This necklace is perfect for you if you are a New York Mets fan or a Florida Gators college football fan. Blue and orange. It's actually a very pretty design. It's a frontal statement necklace. It's got these plastic blue faceted teardrop shaped stones and these orange circular setting, uh, circular set stones rather. And it does not have a maker's mark on it. I will show you what the chain looks like. Here's a look at the chain. It does have a lobster clasp and an extender on this necklace. So it's a really cute piece. You don't have to be a sports fan to wear this necklace. I like the color combination a lot. I was impressed when I saw this pendant and I didn't even know that it was connected to this. It's a Kendra Scott necklace, brand new with tags. Okay, I am not complaining about this thread up box. This is me not complaining. It's a Kendra, it's a Kendra, it's a Kendra, 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 woo! <laughs> Absolutely gorgeous. This glass pendant is faceted and it's got these rose gold glittery bits inside the pendant. Look how beautiful that pendant is. You can see also the way it catches the light that it is faceted. This is a brand new necklace gorgeous chain. The closure is this little slider bead right there. And what you do is you slide the bead up and down to adjust the fit around the neck. There is the Kendra Scott label and on the back the piece is named Arlette. It doesn't have the price attached but I will certainly look that up. I think that's probably going to get around between $60 and $80 when I list on eBay. And there it is, my Kendra Scott Arlette necklace. I'm loving this thread up box. I'm showing these two pieces together because they both remind me of J. Crew. This is a bigger statement piece. This has some colorful faceted crystals and it also has some faux pearls. Look how gorgeous the colors are in these crystals. And I'm just noticing that there are two crystals missing right there, unfortunately. Maybe they're somewhere in this pile of jewelry. It'd be nice if I could find them. And this has a gold tone chain and it does have a lobster clasp right there and an extender. Here's that second necklace that reminds me of J. Crew. These are pennant Pendants, pennant pendants. Try to say that three times fast. Pennant, 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 pennant. <laughs> anyway, um, they're gold tone, they're textured. They're these fun little peach cabochons, round cabochons. And then each under that, each one has gray teardrop faceted crystals. And then one little clear crystal under that. Really cute. The necklace part is curb chain and it does have a lobster clasp and an extender. It does not have a maker's mark. This is a very attractive fashion necklace. I love the color combination. Very soft peach with the gray. Love the mini curb chain on it. So I think I'm gonna list this necklace. This next necklace is a Leah Sophia, stamped right there on the jewelry tag. And it's also stamped right there on the component that's holding all these strands of glass pearl beads. I don't have this laying quite right, but you get the idea. 
I love the color of brown. This is like a medium brown glass faux pearl bead. They are graduated, so the bigger beads are in the middle and they graduate to smaller on the ends. I was gung-ho about selling these and then I noticed that this strand is coming loose. So I definitely don't wanna sell it like this. That is a disaster waiting to happen. So I am going to put this Leah Sophia glass pearl necklace in the craft lot. And this thread out box is so good that even the craft pieces in it are fabulous. So this is going in that craft lot. I've got a few stretch bracelets coming out here. Let's start with this pair. This is a set. You can see the matching faux turquoise beads on this. At least I think they're faux turquoise. And there is a tag on this one. The tag says Chico's. So this is a set of Chico's stretch bracelets. Cute. Next is a super fun stretch bracelet, all in like olive light greens. I think this particular bead is a lot of fun. It's a plastic bead, it's flower. And then there are these faux green pearls, plastic faceted crystal. So it's a fun bracelet. And then the other one from that group, that's the stretch bracelet, is kind of a, a Pandora style bracelet. It stretches on this side and then this side is just links and chain but the beads on here are really pretty. Look at each bead, especially these glass beads and pinks and whites and clear. I like this. This is a really pretty stretch bracelet. These beads, they have little gray accents. They're definitely some sort of natural stone. It may be agate. And then we have two square mother of pearl beads. Look how beautiful they catch that light. The center bead, that focal bead, is a silver metallic druzy style bead. It has a different kind of a texture feel, almost like a composite stone. I love the sparkle of the bead and I just like the color combination. I just had to try this on. It's quite pretty, I like this one a lot making my way to the bottom of this pile and I found all of these rings. The first one is this polished silver tone ring and it's an open circle and a simple band. Now I did see something in there so let's see if I can show you a little bit better. Can you see that M stamped in there and a little crystal next to it? That is made well. The ring does have some of the silver wearing off on the inside, but on the, on the outside of the ring, it's in perfect shape. So I will probably sell this one. It's a nice, simple design. Someone will like this. I almost forgot to size it, but let's go ahead and size the Madewell ring before we move on. The size is eight. So the Madewell ring is a size eight. This next ring is gorgeous. There's an oval stone, and I think it's turquoise, but I am not 100% sure right now. I like the setting. It's on a simple rope setting, and here's a look at the band. This whole thing is copper. There is the underside of the ring, and it's a very pretty ring. Let's size the ring. And this appears to be a size seven, a size seven on this one. Look at the stone in this ring. I love the band. I love the setting. The stone is fabulous. Now, what is that stone? Is it moonstone? This is going to be something that requires research or some of my viewers are so knowledgeable. If you guys know the stone in this ring, please let me know in the comment section down below. Check out this band. It's all these little dots or micro beads and I'm pretty sure it's sterling silver. I don't see a mark on it just yet. Look at the underside. It's beautiful. Wow, I just love the way this stone picks up the light. Now let's size the ring. I think it's safe to call this a seven and three quarters. I almost forgot to take the magnet to it, so let's do that now. I am not surprised. There's no attraction to the magnet. I will go ahead and test this and let you know on the screen right here if it is so sterling silver or not. 
There are two more rings in that group. Here's the next one. Now this is interesting. I like the way this band has little S, little filigree swirl. This looks also to be sterling. There is a mark in there. The stamp in this ring is 950. If I'm not mistaken, that's platinum. This is a platinum ring. Isn't this beautiful? Wow, I can't believe there's a platinum ring in here. Now the next question is, what is this stone? Let's take a look at the bottom. Okay, the bottom is completely metal, platinum. So that's the next thing I have to figure out is what kind of stone this is. Really pretty setting. Look at that. I am still going to put the magnet to it just to be sure. And the magnet is not attracted to the platinum. Very cool. Very, very cool. I am loving this ring. Now let's size it. The ring is a seven and a half. If you have any ideas of what this stone might be, definitely leave me some comments down below and let me know what you think it could be. And the final ring in that group is this one. This is a beautiful band, silver tone. It has some tiny crystals, maybe CZs in there. And there is a 925 stamp inside the ring. The other marks inside are the number seven, which might be the size, and then NVC. This is such a beautiful ring. I am going to just put a pause on this right now and go look up NVC and see what I come up with. So after looking it up online, I looked it up on eBay. NVC stands for Natalia V. Collister. So this sterling silver band ring will probably bring me between $18 to $25. So not bad, not bad at all. Here is another brand new pair of earrings. These are still in the plastic wrap. The brand on this is Soko. I'm not familiar with this brand, but it's a very simple linear, curved linear pair of earrings in silver tone. It's got a long hook ear closure or ear wire. So I'll look that up. They have a website, shopsoko.com. So I'll definitely look that up to see if it would be worth reselling. Next, this is really cute Alex and Ani bracelet. This one is gold tone and look at that lobster charm hanging off. It's a little red enamel painted charm. Oh, and there's the classic little charms hanging off of the bracelet as well. Charity by design on that one. There is the Alex and Ani logo. And then there's another charm that says Alex and Ani. The bracelet is in terrific shape. The gold finish on this is really yellow and brilliant and I'm definitely selling this one. How cute is that little lobster charm? This is another Alex and Ani bracelet. This is an S initial charm bracelet in brass tone. The year stamped on this one is 2016. This Alex and Ani bracelet is also in good shape so I'm definitely enlisting this one too. But wait, there's more. There's another Alex and Annie. I think this should be the last one. I don't see any more hanging around here anywhere. Um, this is a silver tone, dog paw print charm. Great shape. There is a little mark right there, but I think it may be able to just to get cleaned up. There's that spot. I might be able to get that polished off. If you're a dog lover, you're probably gonna like this bracelet. This necklace is quite beautiful. This is a three strand necklace with ivory rice pearls that may be onyx and they're also gold tone tiny little beads. There is no jewelry mark on this. This necklace may very well be handmade, artisan made and it's made very well. The strands of beads are twisted, so pretty. And it does have a gold tone barrel clasp as a closure. This is a great looking necklace. I'm putting this in the cell pile for sure. This next bracelet has gold tone curb chain, brown leather ends with snap closure, and there are two crystals on each end. There is a name imprinted on the snap and it is Shang Tong, S-H-E-N-G-T-O-N-G. -G. I will have to look this one up. I am not familiar with that brand, but it's a very unique bracelet. 
Another pair of earrings on the earring card, A New Day. That is a Target brand. Now this says sterling silver nickel free. This is a pair of uh, earrings with leaf charms and silver tone. The leaves, they are leaves, right? They're not um, feathers. In any case, I'm going to see if the magnet is attracted to the earrings at all. The charm is not sticking to the magnet. The ear wire is. So maybe it's the ear wire that's nickel free and the charm that's sterling silver. But they're very cute. Let's see, is there a price on the back? $14.99. Here's a stretch bracelet. It's copper tone and gold tone. Now these are feathers. The stretch is kind of scaring me. You know that feeling where it feels kind of dry? So the charms will be great in a craft lot. Someone will probably really enjoy them. I am going to toss this in the craft lot because that elastic is going to give any time now. Another new on card piece, a cola, one bead, one hope. It says acolaproject.org. This is a glass bead on a beige cord, brand new on the card. And one woman. My one hope is for love to last forever. So I will look that up to see if this is uh, good for resale. Otherwise, I'll put that in the craft lot. What you're seeing here is a really cool pendant on a very long necklace. The pendant is made with black and pearl finish seed beads. The fringe comes down to a point and then we have these tassels here in ivory and black. The tassels are very clean and in good shape. Let's pull this down. And there are two strands of chain very long strands of chain. There's not a maker's mark on this one. It's finished with a lobster clasp and an extender. This is a super fun necklace. It's very boho, really funky, and I definitely think there is a buyer for this necklace. These are just a few of my favorite pieces from this box. I thought the box was fantastic. What did you guys think? Share your thoughts with me down below in the comments section. I always love hearing from you. If you enjoy mystery jewelry box unboxings, check out the two videos I have on the screen right here. If you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, hit my face. That's right, <laughs> on the right hand side of the screen. You can click on my face and that will take you to a subscribe option. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and I thank you guys for joining me today. I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.